Welcome to the iLearn Virtual Campus. Please sign up for a free iLearn membership on our website, check out our 7th Annual Conference coming next spring 2021, and let us know if you're interested in hosting events or leasing space on our campus by emailing campus at immersivelrn.org. Hello everyone, I'm Arim Dande from the University of Queensland and um, I'll be your chair for this session, for the last session for this day. Normally in any other year, this will be the time when you go out after this and have our dinner, have some drinks, explore the Brazilian city. But unfortunately this year, we'll, most of us have to, if you're in Australian region, you have to go to work or wherever you are, you may have to go to bed. Whatever it is, it's just uh, five more talks, please stay with us about this year, COVID has done a lot of distractions, right? But one good thing it has done for us is we do not have to explain the importance of remote collaboration to anyone, right? It's everybody just gets it because most of the people are using one form of the other collaboration tools. And uh, thank you. And um, this um, brings us to this uh, very important and timely session on collaboration. Right, so we have very nice five papers and five presenters who are ready to go. So without any further ado, I'd like to invite um, Wentao to present their paper on splicing for effective VR collaboration. Um, thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Wentao Wu from Beihang University, Beijing, China. Our paper is View Splicing for Effective VR Collaboration. This work is together with Lidi Wang, Zijing Zhou from Beihang University, and with Roy Hu Papaskiu from Purdue University. Consider a collaborative VR application. The collaborator indicates a part of the virtual environment to the user using a virtual laser pointer. Although the collaborator sees the laser dot, the user might not see it due to occlusion. In this paper, we present a visualization method for letting the user see the workspace exactly the same way the collaborator does. This way, the user can see the laser dot. Furthermore, our visualization method shows the part of the VE close to the user conventionally. For example, the nearby pipe appears at the same location as it does in the user's conventional image. This way, the user can turn to the collaborator and see the collaborator's avatar, which supports natural communication. This, of course, would not be possible if the user were simply given the collaborator's view. We render the user visualization with a novel multi-perspective camera, which we call the switch camera. A switch camera ray consists of two line segments connected with an app. The rays start at the user viewpoint and then they bend to align with the collaborator rays. This way, the user region, which is shown from the user viewpoint, and the collaborator region, which is shown from the collaborator viewpoint, are seamlessly connected over the transition region. Our view splicing pipeline has three main steps. In the first step, our pipeline constructs a switch camera given the user in collaborator views. In the second step, the switch camera is used to warm the virtual environment by displacing the vertex of its geometry. Finally, the warm VE is rendered conventionally with the current left and right user eye cameras, producing the final stereo multi perspective visualization. The algorithm computes a cubic basic curve that connects P1, P1 to P2O. 
there are four control points, P2, C2, C1, P1. P2 and P1 are defined by the user and collaborator views. C1 and C2 are chosen with an optimization process. C1 and C2 are chosen to avoid false over the transition legend. In this example, the segments that load the transition legend intercept. So this candidate Bayesian curve receives a low score. Here is the Bayesian curve that is suitable for rich camera construction. Once the switch camera is constructed, it is used to warm the V. The warp is implemented by displacing the geometry vertex. The displacement is computed by first projecting a vertex with the switch camera and then by unprojecting it with a conventional camera. Here, in the warp VE, the user has direct line of sight to the collaborator's laser dot. The warp VE is then rendered in stereo for the user. The resulting visualization shows the user region exactly how the user will see it in the conventional visualization. So this part of the switch camera image is identical to this part of the conventional user image. The collaborator region is shown exactly the same way the collaborator sees it in a conventional visualization. So this part of the switch camera imagery is identical to this part of the conventional collaborator image. We test the switch camera visualization in the within subject user study with three conditions. In the first control condition, a participant uses conventional VR visualization and the user can work around to change view. In a second control condition, the user was able to toggle between their own view and the collaborator's view using a controller button. In the experimental condition, the participants use our view splicing visualization based on the switch camera. There were three tasks. For the first task, the collaborator point to a pipe in a virtual factory scenes and the user had to indicate the color of the pipe to which the collaborator is pointing. The hypothesis was that the user can do this more easily with the switch camera visualization that shows the laser dot from the current user viewpoint. The second task uses the same factory scenes. The collaborator point to a pipe and just using their arms and then point to a second pipe. The user had to indicate the color of the first pipe, the collaborator gesture, and the color of the second pipe. The hypothesis was that the user can do this more easily as they can easily alternate between viewing the workspace and the user with a natural head rotation. The third task used a VE with eight spheres connected with wires to eight buttons. The wires are tangled such one cannot tell which, which button is connected to a given sphere unless one could trace visually the wire from the sphere to its button. The collaborator point to a sphere and the user had to press the button to which the sphere is connected. The hypothesis was that the user can do this more easily with the switch camera that maintains visualization continuity over the transition region. Here are the results of the study for three objective matrix. For task one, with conventional visualization, participants had to translate the viewpoint significantly to see the laser dot, which also results in significantly longer completion times. For task two, with view toggling, participants had a hard time timing the toggling between the user and collaborator views to see the colors of, of the pipes and the gesture of the collaborator, which results in significantly more errors. For task three, 
with conventional visualization, participants were able to trace the wires from the sphere to its bottom at the cost of the significant new translation. View toggling changes abruptly from one viewpoint to the other, so one cannot trace the wire reliably. We have also investigated percentual metrics using standard questionnaire. Test flow is significantly higher for CC1 and for CC2 compared to EC. We attribute this expected difference to the additional amount of navigation and view toggling required by CC1 and CC2 compared to EC, for which the user engaged the switch camera visualization just once. The SSQ was a administered free experiment and post experiment for each task and each condition. We conclude that in this experiment, simulator thinness is not more of a concern for views rising than it is for conventional VR visualization or for views toggling. The experimental condition produced IPQ scores similar to both control conditions and no difference is significant. In conclusions, we have presented views rising a method for improving collaboration in VR. The method allows switching from the user to the collaborator perspective gradually with visualization continuity. This alleviates the occlusions due to viewpoint disparity while still showing the collaborator avatar in agreement with collaborator voice direction. Finally, the method surpassed that can be done in the real world where the user has to disapprove the collaborator's laser dot by changing their viewpoint. Thank you. I'm ready for your questions. Thank you very much for the nice talk, Wenta. So um, please um, vote our speaker. Do any of you have any question? I do not see any question in over. So looking at the audience, do any of you have any question? Went out. Maybe I'll I'll start with um, with a question. So thanks for the for for the talk. So in your in your study, um, you saw their user and collaborator um, did. So were they allowed to talk to each other when the session was going on? Doc, can you hear us? Uh, okay. The, the user and the collaborator stand side by side and they can talk to each other. Right, okay, that's great. Is there any, any other question from the audience? Right, so if, if not, then let's thank our again and with that right our next speaker so I'd like to invite forum Yoon to present their paper on evaluating remote virtual hands models on social presence in hand-based 3d remote collaboration hello my name is from Yoon from Kai CVL lab Today, I'd like to present our work evaluating remote virtual hands models on social presence in hand-based radio remote collaboration. As technical advances have increased their interest in 3D remote collaboration over the last decade, several virtual media systems have been commercially introduced in both VR and AR. VR can support various collaborative scenarios, but it only supports limited applications that are unaffected by their use in virtual reality. 
On the other hand, AR can deliver a more realistic experience to users, but it is difficult to synchronize its collaborators with their environmental conditions. Based on their limitations, mixed reality-based services can be broadly adopted in the future because of its interoperability between heterogeneous devices and environments. Although 3D telepresence has the advantage of transmitting body movements, however, in some scenarios, expressing only certain body parts is sufficient to accomplish the task at a lower computational cost. In such hand-based tasks, the user's attention is mainly focused on the collaborator's hand expressions, thus it is essential for a system to express the hand movements properly. Therefore, selecting an appropriate virtual hand model, particularly with an adequate understanding of each 3D environment, is an essential factor for achieving a satisfying collaboration experience. In avatar-mediated telepresence, it is important to design the collaborator's virtual avatar to provide a better user perception, such as social presence or trust. The previous studies mostly concluded that realistic model was recommended. However, most studies have been investigated based on full body avatars. The studies that focus more on partial bodies, which can convey communication cues like hands, also need to be explored. The earlier studies, which explored a virtual hand representation, have mostly focused on expressing one's hands in a first person view and VR environment. The hand representation style divided by the degrees of realism was mainly investigated under various factors like presence or workload. However, there is still a lack of research on how to best demonstrate the remote hand embodiment in AR and VR environments. Thus, we set the following research questions to achieve the main purpose. The first one is, how is the overall hand-based 3D telepresence experience different within various remote hand representations, and what features should be considered? And what condition would users feel the highest social presence when the virtual hands are shown with different levels of visual appearance? Lastly, how do user evaluation differ between AR and VR, and it is possible to connect in an asymmetric mixed reality configuration? According to previous research, we set two experimental factors, virtual hand type and 3D environment type. The first factor was differentiated based on the degree of realistic visual appearance, so the three conditions are skeleton, small polygon, and realistic male and female. And the second factor, 3D environment type, was divided into two conditions, AR and VR. Based on earlier studies, the following hypotheses were assumed. Hypothesis 1, 2, and 3 are related to virtual hand type, and it will affect the social presence, presence, and trust in hand-based MR remote collaboration. Hypothesis 2 and 3 indicate that a realistic hand will be the highest of various subjective factors in test performance, but will have the lowest mental load. Hypothesis 4, 5, and 6 are related to the second factor, 3D environment. And we hypothesize that the participants in AR would show higher values on various indicators, but the participants in VR will require lower mental effort. The experiment was in a mixed factorial design, so each participant was experienced in all three hand types, but either AR or VR conditions. As dependent variables, we measured the three different social presences, in presence, trust, preference, and mental effort. The test completion time and the post experiment interview results were also used. A total of 48 participants were recruited in pairs and they were all in a close relationship. We implemented a prototype MR telepresence system. Each AR and VR participant wore a Meta 2 or an HTC Vive, and a limb motion tracker was used for the real time hand tracking. The main user task was an American Sign Language based collaborative board key solving task. At each beginning and the end of the condition, several greeting interactions, such as a handshake and fist bump, were also added to induce more hand interactions. We found a significant main effect of virtual hands on the above all three social presence measurements. Below three graphs are soft scales of harm in the upper social presence. Through the parallel comparison, all three social presences were found significant differences between skeleton and realistic pairs, and the realistic had a higher value. About the 3D environment, only Harman Biocast measurement and its subscale perceived message understanding showed a significant main effect, and AR had a higher value than VR.
In the cases of presence, trust, and preference, we only found significant main effects of Hans factor. In addition, the post-hoc analysis revealed significant differences in skeleton and realistic pairs, and the realistic type had higher values in all indicators. The matter report only had a significant main effect of environment factor, and we found that the VR participants demanded higher load during the task. About the task completion time, lastly, the significant differences was only found between low polygon and realistic type, and low polygons for the lower value. We gathered lots of meaningful responses during the interview, and the summarized general feedback strongly supported the statistical results and implied meaningful discussion points. The one thing that I'd like to point out is there was a different behavior in use between AR and VR participants. Because the VR participants could see both the virtual self and remote hands, they behaved in a self tracking way and delivered direct feedback to their AR partners. The first hypothesis was verified because significant effects of the virtual hand type are found on social presence, presence, and trust. We partially accepted the second hypothesis. Even though the realistic showed higher values on several dependent factors than skeleton style, it was not supported that the realistic had a higher value than the low polygon. One of the possible reasons is that some participants perceive the low polygon positively because of its moderate impression. The experimental results rejected our third hypothesis because of two reasons. First, it was not verified that the realistic would induce the least amount of mental force. And we speculated that it could be possible if the virtual hands could fulfill the role of a communication cue. Second, the low polygon scored better than the realistic in terms of the test completion time. As the participants' feedback indicated, the simplified low polygon's hand expression may more clearly convey the sign. We partially supported the H4 because only harm review cause social presence and the ones of scale have significant effects on the environment. Three virtual hands under the AR conditions were higher than those for the VR conditions, and thus the fifth hypothesis was also partially accepted. The possible reason for no differences in the other values is the participants' concentration was mostly on the communication itself rather than the effect of the environmental difference. We found a significant effect of the environment on mental force, but the results showed the opposite way. It seems to be related to our observation that. The, um, the different amounts of load demanded, particularly more from the VR participants, as I mentioned earlier. Based on our findings, when expressing the partner's remote virtual hands, the amount of realism of the model used should be considered. Between low polygon and realistic, we expected both styles to be used. However, each model would be selected differently depending on the main focus of the collaboration. In other words, message delivery and system limitation or human resemblance and relationship with a partner. The skeleton showed the lowest results in most indicators and negative feelings that we would not suggest using it. In our study, the difference between AR and VR was not statistically significant in most of the user indicators. Thus, the successful utilization of an asymmetrically connected MR telepresence is expected, especially for hand-based tests. However, some additional efforts of the VR users might be demanded when they acquire the wrong hand postures of themselves and partners. So when configuring an MR setup, this kind of limitation should be carefully improved to support the users. We concluded that both the low polygon and realistic could be considered for a different purpose, and the effect of the differences between AR and VR would be diluted in terms of the user's subjective feelings. In conclusion, when selecting proper hand models and designing an effective hand-based MR remote collaboration, we should first understand what the collaboration context pursues and how we should support an effective and seamless interaction between heterogeneous user situations. Although the present study covers interesting points, some limitations should also be considered in a future study. For example, the criteria used for hands was focused on the feature appearance in terms of realism. When the VR participants were exposed to their virtual self hands, then some related effects could be investigated further. Also, the system only adopted a wind motion sensor to track hand gestures, and a single user task was conducted. Thus, we'd like to conduct further studies with a more improved system, other appearance factors, different interactive tasks, and collaborators' roles. That's all for my presentation today. Thank you for your attention.
for your for your talk program and we have a few few questions um so first is um i'd like to ask how do you expect the results might change if better or even perfect hand tracking techniques are used asked by connie lu Um, okay, uh, thank you for your question. And I expected that um, for the first factor hand models, um, I guess the results might be similar. However, for the second factor environment, um, we found um, more, you know, more mental effort for the VR users because they could see their hands and the partner's hands. So um, they or keep, you know, uh, uh, they kept um, talking to their partners to change their hands. Um, like um, your hands um, looks not correct like that. But if we have more robust system, then the tracking error could be lower so um i guess this kind of effort um also could be um less for the participant great okay so there's another question from professor stefana and the question is did you did your realistic hands differ only in gender if so do you think you might have different results if the hands were more customized? Um, yes, um, uh, about the first one, yes, we only differed in gender gender part. And um, that, that uh, for the customization factor, uh, actually it was, it, it is um, very closely related to our, you know, future plan because some of the participants um, mentioned about this, this factor, um, like, you know, that the female's hands um, looks thinner than mine, or, you know, it's so um, um, furry like that. So I think we, um, we will find another insight um, if we um, have um, customized models. Yes, thank you. I have I have a question. We still have about two minutes um, to ask questions. If any of you have any other question, please uh, feel free to ask. Unmute your mic, and uh, you can ask the question. But in the meantime, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, so if you, so this task was very much dependent on the visibility of the hand. Now, yes. If you think that um, if people do any other task where. Um, it's not so much uh, the visibility of the hand is is not the most important thing, but perhaps they're manipulating other objects or doing some mm -hmm. other stuff. Then, do you think the impact of uh, of this customization will be as much as um, as in your, found in your study? Um, yes, actually, we only um, yes uh, uh, for, for in in our you know your study, the task was only kind of some um, word key solving with the American Sign Language because we want to um, see the posture and, you know, various expression um, uh, from the hands. hands. But uh, as you, as you told, told me that uh, if we do some kind of, you know, object manipulation or other task, the result could be different or we, expect it we, we expect to find you know another um things because we if we manipulate some objects then um you know the occlusion could be awkward so uh i think that's the very important point and we also want to um see that part in the future research great thank you very much for thank you if there is no other question, then let's thank our chair again. And that brings us to our third talk, which is uh, which will be given by uh, Peter Ondruska. Peter, I'd like to 
we invited you to come to the podium and Peter will present the paper on collaborative augmented reality on smartphones via lifelong city scale maps. Hi, my name is Peter Andiska and it's my pleasure to tell you about the collaborative augmented reality on smartphones powered by city scale visual maps. This work was developed at Blue Vision Labs, the company I started and that was acquired in 2018. Much of today's available augmented reality is still a single user experience. For example, in games such as Pokemon Go, you can see and interact with the content, but your friend does not see the same content at the same place. This is because the fundamental piece of technology, the backend map that would join all these experiences together is missing. Our work presented today is very much about how to build this map at scale and how to use it to power such augmented reality experiences. Before we begin, let's start with a quick demo of the resulting system. Everything in this video is real without any post-processing. I hope you enjoyed the video and can see that the system is very powerful and can be used to build many exciting experiences in gaming, navigation, and others. Let me tell you how it works. The system consists from multiple steps. First, a map of the city is built from collection of images. Because this map is very big, it has to live in the cloud. The map houses precise position of various augmented reality content that users can see and interact with. Localization service that allows real-time centimeter accuracy localization on several smartphones at the same time over the network. Finally, knowing its position, devices can see augmented reality content and other users properly positioned in the real world. Whereas there has been several works before that studied individual components, we are the first ones that built and study the entire system end to end. In particular, we present novel solutions to three problems that are key for a smooth production performance. How to build map at scale, how to localize over the network, and how to solve various failure cases. Let's first talk about map building. This is done by first collecting data at scale using camera equipped vehicles in the area, and then computing large scale structure from motion 3D map of the city 
using the cluster of computers. We collect data to build 3D model of the city using vehicles equipped by cheap camera rigs. This can be done efficiently in a matter of few days for an average city. And this process results in billions of images with GPS tags. Next, we use large scale structure from motion to compute the 3D map from this data. As the known algorithms don't perform at this scale, we use hierarchical structure from motion. First, we split the data into overlapping clusters that are computed independently. The redundancy is important and a key to being able to construct the entire map, even in the case if several subcomponents are missing due to various data problems. The resulting computation takes 90 hours on a cluster of computers, but because of its horizontal scalability, it can be significantly speeded up by employing more computers. The final map can be visualized in a form of point cloud as shown here. It contains billions of points capturing the structure of the city. It can be also overlaid on top of existing 2D maps where you can see the map aligning with existing structures such as buildings. Next, let's talk about localization in this map. As said before, the map is very large and because of this, it has to live in the cloud. To allow real-time localization, every smartphone is running its own visual odometry system that is being synchronized with this map. This synchronization consists of computing transformation between local and map coordinate system. It is done by sending pictures to the cloud to determine their position in the global map. And from the knowledge of their both local and map coordinates, the resulting transformation can be computed. Here you can see key users using the system that are being localized in this map. Localization is very accurate, resulting in the ability to see each other's location on the screen, thanks to the ability of both devices to localize in the same map. You can see both devices are walking through the map and being able to interact with each other. Here you can see comparison between localization accuracy of the proposed visual localization in blue and GPS in red when walking down the street. The visual positioning system is significantly more accurate than GPS, and this is necessary for smooth augmented reality experience. We also observed that the performance of the system improves just by collecting more data to build the map. This creates a simple procedure. If you want to improve the performance of the system, we just need to collect more data to build the map. Let's look again at some of the experiences possible to be built using the proposed system. Collaborative gaming, where everyone sees the same thing and can interact with the environment and with each other. 3D tagging of the content on the street to be left for others to discover. Intuitive augmented reality navigation, where you just follow the arrows to get to the destination. At the bottom, you can see the difference between the visual positioning system in green and GPS in blue. The system also works on vehicles equipped by phone or a camera, and where it can provide high precision localization and instructions about the path, tech traffic lights, traffic signs, and other information stored in the map. Finally, when we can localize both pedestrians and vehicles, you can create experiences as this one, when you can find your taxi on a busy street just by looking around. We believe having ubiquitous augmented reality is the next step in the development of the field, but it requires powerful infrastructure in form of city scale maps. And as you could see, these systems can be built efficiently at scale and to power many exciting applications already today. We think this is the next exciting step in that new era where people and hardware can interact with the environment 
and with each other in completely new ways. All right, thank you very much for the for the talk. Um, so, yes, there are a few questions. So, first question is from Mario Lawrence. Um, how do you ensure privacy of the canned persons? Can you hear us, Peter? No, we cannot hear you. Yes, I guess, um, Peter, is your, is your mic working? All right, so in that case, perhaps, um, let's thank the guy again, and um, we can continue the discussion in the chat. And of course, you can email Peter directly if you have any further question. Very much, again. And that brings to the fourth talk of the session it will be given by Jenny. Hey, Jenny, can I please request you to come to this podium? And Jenny will present their paper on Collabo VR, a reconfigurable framework for creative collaboration in virtual reality. Hello, everyone. Thanks for your interest in Collabo VR, a reconfigurable framework for creative collaboration in virtual reality. This is Jenny Yihe. I'm a six year PhD student in Virtual Reality Lab at New York University. The project Global VR has been done in collaboration with Ruo Feidu from Google and my advisor, Professor Kemperi. Communication is happening every day and everywhere, locally, remotely. However, it is not always very effective. For example, sometimes we need to sketch on whiteboards for better clarity, but someone's line of sight may be blocked. In another case, people in conventional video conferences can hardly read pointing gestures to digital content easily. We realize that sketching, one of the most natural and fun ways to express ourselves, has rarely been explored in collaborative VR. Additionally, it is an open question what is the best layout and interactive mode for creative collaboration? We investigate the following research questions. What if we could bring sketching to real-time collaboration in virtual reality? If we can convert raw sketches into interactive animations, will it improve the performance of remote collaboration? Are there better user arrangements and input modes for different use cases? Or is it more a question of personal preferences? To answer the questions, we present Global VR an open source reconfigurable framework for both co-located and geographically dispersed multi-user communication in VR. Our system engages users' creativity by sharing freehand drawings, converting 2D sketches into 3D models, and generating procedure animations in real time. To minimize the computational expense for VR clients and offer a reconfigurable framework, we leverage a cloud architecture in which the computational expensive application Choptop is hosted directly on the servers, with the results being simultaneously streamed to clients. For each frame, we global VR servers transmits users' strokes to cloud app, broadcasts the rendering results from Choptop 
and sends audio streams to all clients simultaneously. To adapt different use cases and optimize the virtual spaces depending on tasks, we further support the real-time switching of different use layouts. Before we came up with the layout conditions in detail, we explored a variety of user arrangements and input modes that affect communication and collaboration. We investigate three user arrangements and two input modes. The first one is side-by-side. -side. The side-by-side -side arrangement places each of the mode users in a shared virtual space, which is defined within the tracking range of the headset. All users may focus on the content during the creative collaboration. However, the avatars of two users may be occluded with each other, like in real life. The face-to-face -face arrangement solves the occlusion issue by mirroring all the other avatars' locations to the side of their currently activated interactive board. See the example that user one enables the face-to-face -face arrangement. So user two in user one's view is mirrored to the other side of the left interactive board, which user two is looking at. Hence, user two and user one did not visually block each other. Then let's take a look at the gaze interaction. Board A is defined as the intersection point of the gaze direction between two users and the left interactive board. Assuming that user 1 and user 2 are both looking at board A. Before mirroring operation, user 1 and user 2 are only aware of themselves looking at board A. After the mirror operation, the gaze direction between users and the content is maintained. Moreover, users are aware of each other's folks when gazing at board A at the same time. Since we did not manipulate the content in Club VR, the content is still visible and correct to each viewer. Besides, this user arrangement is also easy to scale. Here shows the extended version with four users from user one's perspective. Each user sees the other mirror reverse through their respective boards. The respective board is decided based on their corresponding user's facing direction. Compared to the side-by-side -side arrangement, our face-to-face -face arrangement reduces visual clutter while maintaining eye contact. The hybrid arrangement inherits the teaching in a classroom metaphor, where the teacher uses the face-to-face -face arrangement to observe the students, and the students use the side-by-side -side arrangement for classmates and the face-to-face -face arrangement for the teacher. We imagine that this arrangement may be useful for online education with a large audience. Regarding input modes, we explore two of them in Club VR. One is direct mode, which adapts the metaphor of writing on a whiteboard. The second one is projection mode, which enables the user to sketch on a private workspace at the hands and project the contents onto the shared interactive board. Combining the real world metaphors, we design three layout conditions to evaluate the global VR system integrated, mirrored, and projective layouts. The integrated layout inherits the side-by-side -side whiteboard metaphor by applying side-by-side -side user arrangement and direct input mode. This layout places remote or co-located participants into the same shared virtual space. The mirrored layout inherits the face-to-face -face communication metaphor. This layout resolves the issue with the clutter and approaching by facing other avatars to the opposite side of the interactive board. The projective layout inherits the lecture with a presentation metaphor. The presenter can focus on sketching or designing their private workspace and project the content to the shared interactive board for the other audience. To evaluate the club VR, we conduct a within subject user study with 12 participants. Our findings reveal that users appreciate the custom configurations and real-time interaction in club VR. After running repeated measure ANOVA on the data collected, we found that Club VR can foster communication and help collaboration when participants are geographically dispersed. The mirrored layout had better usability and task performance, and they received the highest rate from the participants. Below are the takeaways of our project. First of all, we developed Club VR 
a reconfigurable end-to-end -end collaboration system using a cloud-based computing architecture to support multi-user sketch, audio communication, and collaboration in 3D. Secondly, we designed custom configuration for real-time user arrangement and input modes inspired by real-world metaphors. Also, we provided a quantitative and qualitative evaluation of collaboration with our participants to discuss its advantages, limitations, potential impacts on collaborative VR systems. Lastly, we will open source our software to facilitate future development in collaborative VR systems with multimodal inputs. Next, we showcase several live demos of Club of VR. Club of VR can be used for trip scheduling. Multiple remote users are rendered as virtual avatars in front of a large virtual interactive board. With frequent join, users can write and draw their desired travel plans and coordinate with friends via both audio communication and sketches. Club of VR can also be helpful for interactive presentation. The presenter and the audience are on the opposite side of the interactive board, while the sketches are shown identical to both of the audience and the presenter, while maintaining the gaze interaction. Club of VR can further help with designing spatial layouts, especially in 3D. The user can draw furniture with a combination of primitive 3D objects and place them directly at the preferred locations. The system functions the same for left-hand users and right-hand users. All the drawings can be further manipulated after drawing. Moreover, Club VR provides users with notepad tabletop writing experience. The designer can focus on sketching the concept on a private interactive board the experience is close to drawing on a digital tablet with a pen while the contents will be projected to the large shared interactive board to the other audience. We envision Club of VR may facilitate future research in collaborative work in virtual reality. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Jenny, for your talk. Um, we have uh, a question already. Please, uh, yeah, please uh, appreciate the speaker. The first question we have is: um, Do you see any qualitative difference um, in the kind of content created in the different modes as by Professor Steve Fenner? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Steve. Yes, that's true. So we we try to analyze both on the subjective side, side and the quantitative side. So for the task of performance, we need to we we ask every group to to discuss and design a living room. So and then at the beginning, they need to write down what they think uh, the living room will look like without discussion. And then uh, in the in the main session, they need to they need to discuss, they need to design, they need to solve all the conflicts. And then eventually, we ask them to write down write down a notepad. Uh, txt file right now again about what they think right now their their conclusion about uh, such a living room design and then we will we will calculate we will count the each detail point like the color the shape the texture the uh the the item they choose to to put in the living room as uh each of them as one point and then calculate them at all to see if the task performance are different or not and then we found out that uh in in mirror layout, the the they they have uh in mirror layout it has significantly higher task performance than the other two, but the other two they don't have dif uh, significant differences between each other. Uh, does that answer your question? I saw you are typing. <laughs> oh, no problem. Yeah, just contact me if you think there's some further things we can discuss. Yeah, because we open source the code to come we think it well, it might help for the future collaboration in VR. All right, so is there any other question from the audience? Hmm. 
your hand or unmute your mic. I have I have a, a quick question for you, Jenny. Um, so in, in your work, I think uh, latency is really important. So did you notice any effect? And for example, if you really scale it up with, uh, with many participants who are uh, sketching and, and collaborating in the space together, uh, in that case, do you do you see there will be any any problem of latency and would that affect the social presence anyhow? That's a very good question because we do analyze that in our paper. There is a there is a, a figure. There's a graph. We we try to scale it to ten clients at all, and the performance did not really drop. Uh, between four participants and ten participants. But considering if we want, really want to scale it to a very large scale, like a uh, a uh, kind of a uh, webinar scale like 50 or 100 participants then that will be a problem but at that time i think that the design will be so totally different because it's kind of like not that realistic to force uh 100 people to interact with each other together at that time but we were thinking about different direction to scale it and to see its potential great thank you very much so there is another question from Daniel Salamanca. So first, uh, let's say it's a great work. And the question is, uh, what formats can we export what we create? Uh, everything in the in the application, they are real time transfer. So we do not really export it to file to into file system for further use. And during the real time trans uh, transmission, they are all we we serialize and deserialize them into line data and all other attributes data. So that's like you can see uh, in our in our application, there are several parts at the server, the server side, and the VR uh, VR interaction, and also as well as Chalk Talk uh, drawing online drawing tool. So we were thinking that if we want to use several in, use different tool to replace it with other uh, living uh, uh, live presentation tool, that's also possible. And at that time, we just need to serialize the data from other kinds of tool into our application, into Club of VR, then we are, open, we are able to have fun with that too. So that's, yeah, thank you, my right. pleasure. Okay, thank you. All right, so is there any, any more question from the audience? Not then, uh, let's thank the teacher again. And with that, it brings to the last talk for the day. And I'd like to invite Leona June to come on the podium and her on placement retargeting of virtual avatars, similar indoor environments. Hello, this is Leona June from Motion Computing Lab at KAIST. Title of our paper is Placement Retargeting of Virtual Avatars to Similar Indoor Environments. Thanks to the fast developing technologies, geographically separated users can interact with each other through their virtual avatars. There have been two major approaches to realize telepresence between different spaces. First approach is to establish the correspondence between two spaces at the furniture level so that an avatar can be placed in the corresponding seat of the remote space. Another approach is to find the optimized mutual spaces between different spaces. The drawback is that those approaches are effective only for the partial area between spaces. In order to fully utilize an entire space for telepresence, we propose an algorithm that finds an avatar's placement in a remote space, preserves the semantics of a user's placement in a local space. Our target scenario for everyday telepresence is the following. Suppose person X and person Y are experiencing co-presence through their avatars. When person X moves to a new placement, where is the optimal placement of avatar X prime? Major challenge of our problem is find out what needs to be preserved 
by the placement of the avatar for telepresence between different species. We asked the crowd for the answers by conducting user preference survey. Here is our method overview. As the similarity depends on human perception, we first perform a user survey that collects the placement data preferred by people. By examining the collected data, we identify a set of features that are relevant to the telepresence. Then, the neural network is trained to learn the similarity of the placements using the triplet loss architecture. Once the similarity estimator is obtained, we find the optimal placement using a sampling-based searching scheme. For user preference survey, we asked participants to place Avatar X Prime at their preferred locations. Participants were provided with both a 2D flow plan of each space and egocentric views of the person and avatar. From the user survey, we obtained user selected placements as similar pairs and randomly generated placements as dissimilar pairs. After reviewing the results of the survey, we identified the following low-level features to represent the semantics of a person's placement in an indoor environment. First, the interpersonal feature describes the geometric relationship between a person and an avatar of the other party. For the visual attention feature, we assume that all objects within a narrow visual field within a certain distance are candidate objects of visual attention and nearer objects from the position of person and the center of gaze have a higher visual attention value than farther objects. Third, the pause accommodation feature is represented with the high field around the location. Last, the spatial feature describes the functional characteristic of the surrounding space, and the distribution of furniture is an important factor for this. So far, we have obtained samples from the user survey and defined the feature vector that characterizes a placement in an indoor scene. Next, we develop a neural network that learns the nonlinear characteristics of the similarity between two placements. The neural network is trained with a triplet loss framework, which learns the similarity between input features in a supervised way. After the similarity estimator is obtained, we find the optimal placement using a sampling-based searching scheme. First, we sample each space as a 2D grid map with a grid size of 0.25 meter and 24 orientation samples, and compare the similarity between the feature vector of person X and avatar X prime at every sample. Then, from the best sample, we finally perform the particle swarm optimization to find the optimal placement of avatar X prime. While our method was developed for AR telepresence, we first performed the test in VR as it is more convenient to construct the various facial configurations in VR. Here we show two cases of avatar placement examples using VR prototypes. Please refer to the supplementary videos for more examples. For comparison with other approaches, we show the strengths of our method that considers a wide range of features against the previous approaches that match only a few features. First example shows that our method preserves the context of interaction between two people around the table. Compared to the placement of avatar that only matches the interpersonal relation. Second example shows that the placement of avatar Y by our method preserves the context of sitting in front of the dining table, while the results obtained by matching only the interpersonal relation and sitting affordance does not respect this spatial characteristic. Third example shows that our method preserves the context of watching TV together. In this case, our method keeps the visual attention and interpersonal relation instead of the sitting affordance.
Finally, we constructed AR television system for the application demo. Person Y in space B sits in the sofa. And the avatar Y prime is placed in the remote space A. In space A, person X sits in the chair in front of the table. And the avatar X prime is placed in the remote space B. Lastly, person Y moves to look at the avatar X prime from the side. And avatar Y prime is placed accordingly. After we developed the AR Televisions prototype system, we conducted a user study on the quality of placement by our method against the ground truth, which is the manual placement of avatar by user, and the simple method that only matches the geometric relation. This video shows example of acquiring a manual placement by the user. For the evaluation of the self-avatar from the first-person point of view, our method is significantly better than simple method, but significantly worse than ground truth. However, for the evaluation of the avatar of the other party from second-person point of view, which is actually the case of practical application, our method is competitive with ground truth and significantly better than the simple method. Conclusion, we presented a new direction for telepresence between these similar spaces by proposing a method for placing avatars in a lingual environment. And we constructed the AR telepresence prototype system for user evaluation. Future work, we can do further analysis on the degree of dissimilarity between spaces and develop methods such as didactic gesture retargeting and locomotion strategy for your attention. Very much, Leona. And the speaker. Is there any question from the audience? Or I, let me ask a question to you, Leonard. So in, in your study, um, I saw that you didn't really use any, any special, uh, sorry, any social presence uh, measures there, but um, did you notice participants comment about anything that, that indicates that the social presence is higher when your method is used versus the ground truth or the simple method is used? Uh, for our user evaluation, uh didn't that user really do the the actual interaction and the conversation? So your presence was not accurately measured, but uh, the our message like showed uh, you know like spatial presence. Right. Okay. That's great. Um, thank you. Is there any other question? Anyone, if you want to ask a question, please unmute your mic and feel free to ask. All right. If uh, there is no further question, of course, you can ask questions um, through email or through OVA. So you can keep interacting with the, with the authors. Um, so let's um, thank the speaker again and speaker again. And um, sorry, I wanted to clap. <laughs> yes, and uh, and let's uh, let's thank all other other speakers.
for this session and I'd like to thank all of you for attending it and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aridam. Thank you, all the authors. Now we conclude our fourth day of ISMAR 2020. It's a pleasure to have you here. See you tomorrow. Use this time. If it's not evening for you, chat a bit, do some network. See you tomorrow. Thank you a lot. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this, uh, all right. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank it's, you. It's a huge pity because I sent the second version of my presentation video, but it kind of it. I did not send an email to tell the tell the tell Isma. So, <laughs> so ah, the first right. version was correct, but no big difference. I was just more smooth. But thank you very much for everything. That's pretty. Welcome to the iLearn Virtual Campus. Please sign up for a free iLearn membership on our website, check out our 7th annual conference coming next spring 2021, and let us know if you're interested in hosting events or leasing space on our campus by emailing campus at immersivelrn.org.